Breast cancer rates are rising and it's not just in older women. Young health conscious women who eat clean, work out and have no family history are being diagnosed at alarming rates. If that sounds unfair, it really is. In fact, I personally know several women who were diagnosed with breast cancer in their 30s, which is considered early onset since the median age at diagnosis is roughly 60 years old in the US. And here's the shocker, only about 10% of breast cancer cases are genetic. That means the other 90% are linked to everyday exposures most of us should never have to think about. Whether it's the beauty products on your skin, the plastic around and in your food, or the chemicals in your tap water. These disruptors don't come with warning labels, but they build up silently year after year until you can't ignore them anymore. And while no one is talking about it, the science is clear. You can't control your genes, but you can control this one thing. So if you've ever felt powerless when it comes to cancer risk, know this, you're not. You just haven't been given the full story. When you think of breast cancer, you probably think of genes like BRCA1 and BRCA2. Those are ominous acronyms that seem to seal your fate, but here's what the statistics actually say. Less than 10% of breast cancer cases are caused by inherited genetic mutations. That means over 90% are linked to something else. And that something else is everywhere. Like I said, it's in the products on your skin, the packaging around your food, the water from your tap, and even the blue light from your phone late at night. And one of the biggest culprits are endocrine disruptors. These are chemicals that interfere with your body's hormonal signaling and create a ripple effect within estrogen sensitive tissues, which unfortunately is almost everywhere in your body. There are estrogen receptors everywhere from your brain to your heart, to your reproductive organs and more. Generally speaking, endocrine disruptors are chemicals mainly derived from industrial manufacturing that can interfere with the normal function of the estrogen of the endocrine system. It's the man-made stuff that's known as xenoestrogens. And for some reason, people have decided to design chemicals that are similar enough to estrogen that they'll bind to and activate receptors in the body. Xenoestrogen exposure is associated with early onset puberty, which is a risk factor for breast cancer development since cells in the breast are rapidly developing during this time and can easily be disrupted by environmental chemicals. Now this is shocking. Something as simple as disrupted sleep and melatonin production from screen exposure has been linked to increased breast cancer risk. A study looking at 894 healthy women and 211 women with breast cancer found that participants with smartphone addiction had a 1.43 fold risk for breast cancer. Women with the habitual behavior of smartphone use for more than 4.5 minutes before bedtime had a 5.27 fold risk of breast cancer compared to those who used a smartphone for less than 4.5 minutes before bedtime. Researchers also found that the closer the phone to the chest or abdomen area, the higher the risk for breast cancer. But here's the thing, if outside factors can raise your risk, then they can also help to reduce it when you avoid them. And that's where the power lies. These exposures are woven into your daily routine and hiding in some of your favorite products. Here's where they hide most often. Scented lotions and perfumes. These are often packed with parabens and phthalates, two hormone disrupting ingredients that can be absorbed through the skin and influence breast and other estrogen responsive tissues like the uterus. One study found that removing them from daily use reduced breast cancer gene expression, specifically through beauty and personal care products. Plastics and packaging and bottles, BPA and other bisphenols act like synthetic estrogen in the body, and they're especially dangerous when heated or in contact with fatty foods. Microplastics are hugely concerning due to their widespread pervasive nature, but also because they trigger inflammation and oxidative stress, which are the underlying mechanisms for some types of cancer formation. But not just that, they're also releasing endocrine disrupting chemicals once they enter your body. Tap water. PFAS chemicals and chlorine byproducts are present in much of the US water supply, and these forever chemicals have been linked to hormonal disruption and cancer. Scented candles. They may seem harmless, but when they're burnt, they release benzene and formaldehyde into the air, both of which are known human carcinogens. Mattresses, furniture, car seats, strollers, and electronics are sources of flame retardants that are a significant risk factor for breast cancer. All of these chemicals share one critical trait. They're lipophilic, meaning they accumulate in fat tissue and the breast just happens to be largely made of fat. So over time, these exposures add up, but knowledge is what gives you the power to break that cycle. This isn't theoretical or wellness hype. It's actually published scientific research. 
Phthalate and bisphenol exposure has been linked to early puberty in girls, which as we mentioned, increases the risk of breast cancer later in life. PFAS are also found in nonstick cookware, water repellent fabrics, yoga pants, food wrappers, and these have been shown to impair hormones, weaken defenses, and increase your risk of several types of cancer. This is a problem because if something is immunotoxic, it's dampening or impairing the immune system's ability to do surveillance and actually destroy cancer cells, which is one of its main jobs. So it's really a good idea to avoid endocrine disruptors and also immunotoxic chemicals for that reason. Despite the mounting evidence, these chemicals remain underregulated, especially in the United States. That's not meant to discourage you. In fact, it's a reminder of why personal action and informed decisions matter so much. You don't have to wait for policies or regulations to catch up. You can start protecting yourself right now and you don't need a complete life overhaul to make a difference. Every small change you make to reduce your exposure matters. And here are six practical steps that you can take starting today. First, switch to glass or stainless steel containers for storing food and drinks. Plastics contain phthalates, which can leach into what you eat, especially when they're heated. Go fragrance-free in your personal care and also household cleaning routine. Choose products made with essential oils or like what I do, choose the unscented option or fragrance-free option. Avoid hidden endocrine disruptors like phthalates and parabens by looking for phthalate and paraben-free labels. Filter your tap water using a system that removes PFAS and chlorine byproducts. It's one of the most effective ways to cut down on your exposure. Buy USDA certified organic produce when you can. It limits exposure to pesticide residues that can act as endocrine disruptors. But if you're not able to buy organic all the time, you can soak your fruits and vegetables in a baking soda or vinegar solution to reduce surface pesticides. Studies show that soaking apples in two teaspoons of baking soda per every four cups of water for just 15 minutes can reduce 80 to 96% of pesticides, depending on whether or not they were absorbed into the peel. Either way, this is a great cost-effective method to reduce pesticide exposure in fruits, which is a win if you can't afford to buy organic every time. Another tip is to follow the EWG, Clean 15, and Dirty Dozen list to see which fruits and vegetables have the highest and lowest detected pesticides. This is really helpful to know which ones should be consumed organic and which ones don't have to be. Ditch scented candles and air fresheners and instead replace them with beeswax candles made with essential oils. Remember that you don't have to do everything at once as long as you start somewhere. Each step helps reduce your toxic load and strengthens your body's natural defenses. And over time, those seemingly small decisions can add up to something really big. Breast cancer isn't just a matter of bad luck or bad genes. It's also about the world that we live in and the choices we make within it. And it also doesn't happen overnight. If this message resonated with you, share it with someone that you love. Leave a comment and let me know what's one change you're ready to make this week. And if you want more science-backed strategies to protect your health, check out the videos linked here and download my free hormone disrupting ingredient cheat sheet in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.